We got five nets here. Hopefully get some decent fish. After removing their nets from Husavik Bay, Justin and Mike are taking out their last nets of the season in Hecla. With this virus and stuff going on now, everything's shut down, so thank God it's the end of the season. Now that the markets are closed, the guys are targeting pickerel they can fillet and sell directly to their customers. It's always bullshit in the last day. But there's a problem. We can cross over there. Since they were out a week ago, a new crack is formed between the shore and their nets. That's all water. They must now find a safe place to cross. This will be moving again within a couple hours. Bullshit as usual. Got a little drip here that we can get across. Thank God we only got a couple nets on this side because I'm sure this will be a nightmare. We should get across here, OK, before I have a heart attack. broke so whatever still need to get back over it but try to get these done as quick as possible and get the hell out of here is the plan eager to finish off the year the guys make quick work out of lifting their nets definitely some fish yeah and as usual the fishing in hecla does not disappoint one more anchor line to cut after this and that's it done get the hell out of here launch the crack one more time that's it yeah 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 Where's my coach? It was good. Some nets were a little lighter, but definitely, I think, got enough. And who cares? Yielded a tub of net. I'm happy, happy to get the hell out of here. See you later, Lake Winnipeg. See you later, wind. With most of the quota filled, it's time for a celebration. Oh, there you have it. Well, here's good season. To, good season. You did a, I give you a seven out of 10. Yeah, you can yourself. And uh, here's not seeing you for at least a day, so go yourself. Moving to Hackle was kind of something we never planned to do, but it was 100% worth it. Caught all the fish we needed. And actually, this year is probably the least amount of shit that's ever broken. So I give the whole season a 10 out of 10. Well, this was a good net. It was. Gene and Candace Pishke's nets are full of fish on their last day. Did I mention last day today? Feels good. Feels good. We are pulling by hand today. And that's usually a nice way to finish because that's how you start. You start pulling by hand and just to, to finish up. It, it feels good. There's no other place I'd rather be than out here right now. The last net officially out of the water. Finally get to, you know, rest and recuperate after a long, hard season. Uh, heal up any injuries that you got. So all that's running through your mind is you're bundling up that last net. That's it. End of season. Yay! We got just under three tubs. It worked close. But before they call it a season, they must cross back over the pressure ridge. Be better off walking across. You'd never know. Didn't change at all. No way. No. Okay. Should I chisel this away from here? Gene decides to go for it with no extra chiseling down of the ice wall. with the season. I'm happy with everything this winter. Um, last day is perfect. A perfect way to finish off. Hold on. We'll cut her over here. Cut it right there. Yeah. I think we can salvage it. Mike cuts away the net that is frozen into the ice. He's hoping it frees up the rest. Yeah. Okay. I think we got it. Okay, that's good. Yeah. It works, and the net is saved by the Bjarnason's years of experience on the lake. The anchor got caught on the little bit of ice there and lost a, what, a couple fathoms, if that, the net, so we didn't lose much. Better than last time. Yeah. The last net is full of fish. It's a good day for the father-son crew. It's been a good season. No, no complaints. Oh, it was an awesome season. Good fishing, no major problems to the bomber, skidoo, so. It might be a little bit different next year. What I might do is just set more at the start. I'm getting up there. I'm 74. I want to just keep on doing this to show my son how it's done. 
So I want to keep him going as long as I can, uh, and then just pass the licenses on to him. God damn it. Up in the Narrows, Chris Christensen is dealing with a loose track on his bombardier. I've got the right wrench here. He's now searching for the right wrench to tighten it back up. There's a pin I was looking for. Always find what you're not looking for when you're looking for something. That track is just way too slack. I gotta go down there and see if Trevor's got one in the other bombardier. It's not here. I'm pretty sure I got the right wrench in that other bombardier there. Chris hopes the wrench he needs is in Trevor's bombardier. Hey, stay here and help us. I gotta go tighten the track on the bombardier. Oh, shit. OK, you got 40 years experience. Something I have to tell you is kind of important. Oh, god. Hurry the f up. I'm being an <laughs> There he goes, riding off into the sunset. Could it be for the last time? Who knows? Chris returns with the wrench to fix the track. See here, look. It's banging right through. This is slack here, and it's lifting up. So the middle of this here is banging right on here, and I can see already it's starting to make a hole in two places. I don't want it too tight, or it'll just stretch. It's too slack. Well, it's a new track. I think it might have stretched a bit in the heat. Maybe I didn't notice it before when it was colder. Look at that. Can I look a little tighter already? As Chris tends to the loose track, his crew finishes lifting their nets and head over to help Trevor and Riley. Well, looks like my crew's been extended. Weird, they're working so hard all of a sudden. In true ice viking spirit, the code of the lake is about helping others. How primitive are you? Come here, you guys. I gotta say something. I need at least a minute, maybe a minute and a half. Chris gathers the crew to mark the occasion of pulling out the last fish of the season. When I fished with my Uncle Hunnis, he would take the last fish from the net and he would take it out of the net and put it back. For over 40 years, every season, at the end of every season, I've done exactly that. And all of you who've been around me know I do that. So after all these years, I hope that some of the fish that I put back into the water, the relatives of those fish have gotten into your hands. And to pay it forward, I hope it, it's good for you as it has been for me. The lake is just a bowl of memories for me. I can think of all the people who I fished with who are now dead. I mean, so many good times. So many anecdotes, so much knowledge that just kind of seeped in through osmosis or through your skin. It's my golden road to perdition and paradise coming down the Bombardier Trail. It's half-half, you know? It's a place you don't want to be, but it's where would you rather be? So I'm going to take this last fish in the water, Gary Greenerson, take him out of the net and pay it forward for my tribe. So there he goes. There he goes. So that's it. Now, we're going to have a drink. And there's one way you're going to have a drink, and that's if you do the ice hole challenge. <laughs> ah! I'm having a beer. F***ing wimps. Told you, it. <laughs> With no willing takers, the guys force each other in. Oh, God! No! Oh, God! No! <laughs> yeah! Have a beer! I'm not really in the mood. I'm just too tired. I'm just like, it was a good season. I don't want to push anything, and I'm just kind of in more of a stoic mood, and I still have a lot I feel like I want to do, so I'm still not really ready to celebrate yet. All the nets are out of the water. Everything's completed. The season's done. It's so final. It is what it is. It's hurry up to the end. We're going to get the caboose. I seen there was a slush hole on the other side. So I told the boys, we'll get on the other side, get this shack in, get it up on shore, and then a little bit of the anxiety is gone, even though there is a little bit gone right now. Let's go! The boys are at the ridge. I can see them in the distance. I'm guessing they're having a look at it. Chris approaches the pressure ridge, noticing that it has moved a lot since they crossed this morning. The warm weather has caused it to push up. Yeah, they're chopping away. Holy sh! Now hauling the large lifting caboose, it's going to be trickier than ever to get across. Trevor did, but Trevor doesn't have the shack on. And then the weight of the fish as well. I mean, all together, all in, we're over 10,000 pounds. Am I good? Yeah, but come like this, like the way Pete's showing you. Chris Christensen is about to cross the crack for the final time this season. With all the extra weight he's carrying, it's a difficult and dangerous crossing. He decides to hit it at full throttle. If all else fails, the momentum should carry him across. Whoa! Woo! 
I got the machine over the final ridge. And the season reason, baby. Wet right to the end. Well, my seat said enough. <laughs> it's not it. I'm not taking your ass anymore, anymore, it said. Ten feet on shore and my seat breaks. <laughs> Can't write that shit. <laughs> I hope I'm fishing next winter. Let's put it that way. I just hope I'm around. In fact, if anything, now there's more pressure to keep me from growing. I feel like I'm maybe outgrowing. I, I have kind of growing pains now, and my dad and grandpa are like, no, you got to, like, slow down. Like, I would see myself with my own fish plant, with, you know, a lot more of my own gear and fishing licenses and uh, probably a bigger operation. I mean, pretty much just doing more of what I'm doing now, just on a bigger scale. If things change for next winter, maybe I, I don't know, maybe, maybe, it, maybe there's another change in store for me when it comes to fishing. Maybe there's another turn of the page. <laughs>